I'm Mike Ward and welcome to Conversations in Healthcare, a series of interviews uh, with industry lead leaders brought to you by DLG, part of Cloudate. While many of the conversations that we've had in recent times have, have focused on the impact of COVID-19 and, and the efforts uh, that the sector has uh, made to find ways to help patients, it is important to remember that we should not ignore other potentially devastating unmet medical challenges, such as the blight of uh, neurodegenerative diseases, such as Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's disease. So with this in mind, I I'm delighted to be joined by Lean Kawas, who is the founder, president and CEO of uh, Athera Pharma Inc., which is a publicly quoted clinical stage by a pharma company uh, it's headquarters in Seattle, Washington, and it's focusing on developing small molecules to restore neuronal health and stop neurodegeneration. Uh, the company's uh, lead candidate, ATH1017, is a subcutaneous administered BB penetrating small molecule HEF MET activator. Um, and it has completed uh, both phase 1A and phase 1B clinical trials. Uh, in which 88 subjects were recruited, <clears throat> and this included 11 with mild to moderate uh, Alzheimer's disease, and they were assigned to treatment and control groups for the treatment of Alzheimer's disease. The company has also been successful this year in raising new money to pursue its ambitions, first with an $85 million Series B round in June, uh, just before floating on NASDAQ in September, when it raised $204 million in an IPO. So uh, thank you for, for joining me, Lean. Thank you, Mike, for the generous introduction. So, um, <clears throat> you know, as, as I said, you, you, you're not taking an easy route by focusing on uh, neurodegenerative diseases such as Alzheimer's. Um, you know, while it's clearly a, a well-established med medical need, uh, there has been little success in resolving them. So it, it might be helpful if you could first explain you know, what are the key challenges with current you know, AD uh, therapy approaches and, and how does the theorist's uh, approach differ? Yeah, Alzheimer's disease is a complex uh, indication where there's multiple things that are changing or impacted. Um, and, and what the industry have been pursuing in the last 10 to 15 years is a single modal type of approach, trying to address an underlying pathology, which we don't fully understand how these type of pathologies impact the clinical outcome of disease presentation. Um, so, so there's definitely a need for innovation in Alzheimer's uh, disease, like what we're doing in Athera, where we're targeting, as you highlighted, Mike, uh, recovery of uh, network uh, activity, uh, neuronal transmission, and, and having an approach we are targeting, as highlighted, a single target, but the outcome of activating the HGF met is multimodal uh, aspect where you have recovery of synaptic density, which ultimately leads to recovery of uh, signal transduction and network in, in the brain, uh, enhancing neurotransmission which enhances information transmission and memory recovery, um, as well as blo blocking in inflammation and, and different aspects that recover degeneration. And I think this is where we need to start targeting is understanding the presentation of the disease where we can be agnostic of the underlying pathology to potentially not only slowing down the disease, but also improving the disease. So, so where, where did the idea <clears throat> to focus on HGF MET system actually come from, and and what evidence uh, have have you seen um, of its role in, for example, maintaining neuronal health and, and function? So the idea of targeting HGF as a neurotrophic factor or as a critical brain growth factor or neuronal growth factor has been really well studied in the last. 15 years. The name is a little bit uh, misleading because hepato comes from the liver, uh, but there has been a lot of work in the last 10 to 15 years around this target and its critical function in normative brain function, 
uh, and recovery of neuronal health. Now, the, the idea that we have, the origin of the idea that we have in Athera is from Dr. Joe Harding's lab at Washington State, but we've transformed the technology into a, an, a fully owned pipeline by Athera. All of these compounds are novel, new composition of matter that we've developed internally in Athera. Um, and, and some of the evidence that really uh, creates excitement in Athera around the target is um, the, the work that has been conducted at the Allen Institute for Brain Sciences here as well in Seattle, where they mapped the human brain and rank ordered 30,000 genes in an effort to uh, identify new targets that might impact um, the brain health and function. And what was very interesting for us is our target, the MET receptor, was at the top, uh, listed at the top, the number one gene out of 30,000 gene and in normative or stable expression and, and very controlled levels in the cortex, which is an area that we know is involved in, in, in Alzheimer's disease and memory and learning. And when you look at Alzheimer's patients, what you see is there is a significant reduction in the expression of this target. So there's also a pathological change in this target. And what we're trying to do in Athera is rescue this critical brain growth factor and neuronal uh, regenerative pathway. Right, right. In the clinical trials that, that I mentioned, the phase one, phase one B, um, you know, you, you, you showed that multiple dosing of, of HT1017, you described it as significantly improving P300 latency. Now, that is a functional measure that is highly correlated with cognition. However, a connection between these P300 latency results and improved cognition uh, has yet to be established. So what, what are you doing to establish that connection? Yes, thank you. So as you highlighted, the, the actual correlation between this objective measure of cognitive processing, namely ev evoked response potential P300, and, and general uh, cognitive state, the correlation between these two in general has been established uh, specifically for 1017. This is what we're working on right now. We've used P300 in, an early, in our earlier stage uh, trials to confirm that we're inducing a recovery or a change in brain network activity. Currently, we are running two trials, uh, the left AD, which potentially can be uh, our first pivotal trial, and the ACT AD, which is a smaller trial that is running in parallel, and both have very similar uh, designs and uh, recruiting the same patient population, mild to moderate population, where we're, where we're going to be studying the overall effects of ATH1017. Uh, we're looking at cognitive improvement, functional and global improvement as well, behavioral change. And with those two studies, uh, we're going to be able to appreciate the clinical effects of 1017. Now, the smaller study, the ACT-AD, uh, again, has the very similar design component, is what's really going to help us have an initial look to the overall effects of 1017. And what that means, because it's a smaller study, it will read out earlier, and we're going to be able to appreciate the effects of 1017 on the disease overall, including P300, it will enable us to confirm uh, our design assumptions in the left AD and, and if needed, make some uh, adjustment or optimization to increase the confidence in the outcome of the left AD, which is the potentially pivotal trial. And the, the sort of the endpoints that you're going, I mean, are they um, the sort of endpoints that the regulators, you know, considered considered to be sort of you know, validated and you know sort of good evidence that there might be you know it, there might be a reason to, to to approve the drug. Yeah, great question. Yes and no. So yes, because we are including the validated endpoint uh, ADS Cog um, CGIC, which is a global endpoint ADL, which is a functional endpoint. But what we've done uh, as part of our innovative clinical design, um, first of all, because we expect improvements, so the trials will be shorter. It's not the two to three year study, it's 26 week studies because we, we anticipate improvement and that gives us the opportunity to have more efficient clinical design, uh, as well as 
again, because you expect improvement or we believe we will, will have an improvement, uh, we have higher power than the traditional disease modification where they need over a thousand patients per trial. This is a smaller, more realistic size of a trial. Um, but what we've used in innovatively, which uh, we'll need a whole new forum for just discussing our primary endpoint, is the global statistical test. And it's really a mathematical algorithm that we've included as our primary endpoint to understand in an unbiased way the overall effects of 1017. And that gives us an enhanced sensitivity to our primary endpoint because it captures the change from the different endpoints that we have in the trial and gives you an appreciation of what the drug is doing on the totality of, of the disease or the totalities of the symptoms of the disease. Right, right. So, I mean, we're, we're all aware of the, sort of the devastating impact that the neurodegenerative diseases have both on patients and, and those who are, who are caring for them. To what extent, uh, you know, extent is engagement with patients and patients in groups influencing the development of your, your approach? Well, everything, right? Because everything we're doing is for the people that are impacted by these neurodegenerative indications. And what we've done uh, at a very early stage for Athera while we were running the phase one uh, A and B is we started running studios with patients and caregivers and physicians that are uh, living with the disease or seeing the disease or interacting with the disease on a day-to-day -day basis. And we started asking about the different components in the study and what's really important for the patients uh, because ultimately, we want to have a product in, in, in the market that helps patients and, and is easy to use, whether it's around the product profile that it's a sub-Q injectable or it's the different components in the clinical design. For me personally, and the team also shares this, uh, uh, I think, core mission, in addition to developing treatments that are effective, we want to uh, make sure that we're celebrating the patients and appreciating their participation in our trials and enhancing the user experience in our trials. So very early on, we've asked feedback on the design. What are the critical important for both the patients and the caregiver? Because Alzheimer's is the two people disease, not one. And then continuously as the trials are being conducted, we are getting feedback from the key stakeholders that are involved in our trials. Right, right. So could you sort of your outline sort of the uh, the, the business model that you, you're pursuing? I mean, is it, are you looking to, you know, become a sort of fully you know, integrated, you know, biopharma company sort of in this, in this space? Yeah, I mean, we're building a pipeline, uh, uh, as you probably know. Uh, our lead asset, ATH 1017, is starting its pivotal trial, which really positions Ethera in an, uh, a really attractive place because this could be a really one of the biggest uh, catalysts uh, in biotech uh, if we see the benefits that we expect from 1017. Uh, but we also have additional assets. We have compounds that we are developing with differentiated product profiles, orally available compounds that we anticipate that we're going to be developing as pills for neuropsychiatric indications like depression and schizophrenia and anxiety. Uh, we're also interested in indications where there is peripheral damage of the neurons, uh, and because it's a it's a very common uh, underlying representation of multiple indication of diseases. Right, they all share the uh, outcome of aging and disease pathologies where you have degeneration. So we do think recovery of neuronal health can address both the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. So we also have compounds. Uh, groups of compounds or families that are being advanced uh, to explore the potential and peripheral neuronal indications. Um, and we're going to continue with our discovery programs uh, to uh, try and address brain function and, and brain regeneration. So the idea, yes, is to build a company with a very strong pipeline to address both central and peripheral uh, neuronal uh, health and, and neuronal regeneration. Yeah, I, I mean, I was sort of thinking, are you sort of looking, though, for, for, for partners who are going to help you with the sort of the later stages of clinical development and, and the sort of the, you know, the regulatory process? It's not going all the way to the marketplace. Um, or would you, would, would, you, would you have partners? 
it's a little bit early to make comments about this point, uh, but we, we're going to be opportunistic, uh, keeping in mind that uh, increasing the chances for a successful outcome for the product. Our goal is to get assets to patients as soon as possible, and we're going to have an open mind to engage with conversations that might lead to a faster outcome to drug registration and, and patients. But right now we are in the mindset that we're building a theater, we're advancing our technologies, and we wanna have a company that delivers uh, treatments that can help improve the quality of people's life. Okay. So I, I, I've, I've been doing, uh, sort of, you know, asking questions to biotech CEOs for a few decades now. And, uh, and, and sort of one of the key questions that always comes to mind is, you know, is, is there, you know, wh what experience do you actually already have in the company of, you know, sort of taking you know, discoveries from the lab bench and, and translating them into, you know, promising drug candidates and ultimately medicines that help patients. So, do you, do, yeah. do you have the sort of the bandwidth to be able to um, to do that? So we have, uh, at Athena, we have a nice mix between innovation and expertise, specific field expertise. We do have our, our uh, within our management team, our, our chief medical officer, Hans Mobius. Uh, you probably know him. He was the chief medical officer that led the team that ultimately led to the approval of Mementine. And we're actually taking some of the aspects of that strategy for 1017 to potentially accelerate its approval and address the key components uh, for uh, Alzheimer's disease. But as you see, we've also included innovation that because Alzheimer's disease, it also needs this fresh look and fresh uh, strategies around how can we use established methods like P300 to accelerate drug development and have increased confidence in, in uh, drug outcome. So I think we have this really nice collaboration between innovation and, and also experience that has the open mind to endorse new ideas uh, and new methodologies in Alzheimer's drug development. Also our chief operating officer, Mark Litton, has extensive experience in, in different operational aspects of, of drug development and, and uh, biotech development. Within our discovery team, and clinical team. Honestly, we have a fantastic team that is, uh, you know, on a mission to change the reality for people impacted by neurodegenerative indications. So, um, as I mentioned in my intro earlier in the summer, you raised uh, first 85 million in Series B round uh, before taking the company uh, down the IPO route, um, where you netted. A Approximately, I mean, you raised 204 million, but that sort of nets out to about 186 million. What, would, however, were the biggest challenges, you know, raising money uh, during the pandemic when we had all that social distancing and travel restrictions in place? And what did you do to overcome uh, those challenges? Yeah, I, I think people just needed to adjust to. Uh... A, a new transient normal, I would say. So um, we were in the midst of raising the uh, crossover or Series B round for Athera when, and we were very close when the pandemic hit and, and that created, you know, uh, a significant slowdown initially. Um, and, but, but we just needed, to, we needed to appreciate that there's something that everyone was dealing with and that we needed to give people time. We needed investors to digest what's going on. And, and what was very critical at that point that, uh, and obvious is our investors, they were mission oriented. And yes, as you highlighted, I think your intro is, is very important. They appreciate that there is an immediate challenge, or, or the, which is the pandemic. But the, the impact of Alzheimer's and the potential upside for an effective Alzheimer's drug is not going to go away because of COVID. So that type of appreciation from the investors kept them engaged and, and ultimately led to a successful crossover round and uh, IPO. I also have to, uh, Perceptive and Joe Edelman, who joined our, our board, uh, they've been extremely supportive during the peak of the nuclear winter, which is March. We were closing our round in March, April timeline, which was the peak of the, the events and, and uncertainty. Uh, but they, they, they are partners, they've been partners in, in the way to this, the point that we're at right now at Ethereum. 
So, so, so when you were raising the money, what, what did you tell investors you were going to do with the money that, you know, you were, um, that they were going to give you? Um, running the two trials that highlighted, Mike, uh, the, the LIFT AD is a significant uh, pivotal trial, uh, which could be registrational. Uh, if positive, the, the ACT AD is another trial that is running in parallel. We are also planning a Parkinson's disease dementia next year uh, because um, mechanistically, the way that the uh, ATH 1017 works, we really anticipated to address the larger dementia. Uh, definition, uh, including Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's disease dementia. We also want to uh, maximize our pipeline, at least have one additional asset in the clinic in the next 12 to 15 months, um, and, you know, support building the infrastructure for, for Athera. Um, also, we, we are, since it's a registrational trial, and actually that was the main uh, incentive for us, is because left AD can be registrational and it could be pivotal, uh, is we wanted to build the uh, or, or start working on additional aspects that needs to be done in parallel uh, towards an NDA, whether it's manufacturing quality and et, et cetera, which requires uh, the support that we have uh, from our crossover and, and IPO uh, funds. Right. And the uh, you mentioned that there were some other areas you're also looking on. Um, I mean, there you just sort of you mentioned the fact that you're planning to start a uh, sort of Parkinson's trial, but depression and you know some of the other sort of neuropathies that that you're you're looking at. What, what what's the sort of the timeline uh, for depression in this program? So that's you know we, we are in the development stage for these assets. So as highlighted, targeting we're, we're trying to move as quickly as possible possible to uh, the clinic. So hopefully uh, within 12 months, 12 to 15 months, we'll have an asset for uh, neuropsychiatric indications uh, in, in the clinic. We're gonna be using very similar strategies where we wanna implement uh, objective measures at earlier stage of clinical development to give us increased confidence in the potential clinical outcome. So how big is the company now in term, terms of employees and, and do you sort of foresee that growing, you know, uh, much larger in, in, in the coming 12 months or so? Yes, we're high, we're adding to our team every week uh, and we're hiring as you would expect in a very rapid, uh, uh, you know, I, I don't know the exact number, it's between 25 to 30 people because every week we're adding and I know people are being hired as we speak. So we're, we're, we're growing uh, very rapidly um, with a focus. I think we're trying to capture talent that has the same passion and, and mission that we have at Ethera. Right, right. I mean, you, you founded the company uh, in 2011. Um, what, you know, I'd be interested to, to understand you. What, what were the hardest challenges you faced at that time? And then knowing what you now know, what would you do differently? And, and also, what would you do the same? Yeah, that, that's an interesting question. Um, needs a lot of reflection, but you know, every period has its own challenges. And I tell my team that challenges are just opportunities that we need to discover. So I, I, I don't dwell on things that uh, happen. So I, I can't really highlight what are the biggest challenges. I think that you know, being a first time entrepreneur and going out, I try to solve for that by creating a team that has a lot of experience, but, but balancing it out with innovation. Um, you know, I, I think as entrepreneurs, you're too busy to try to dwell on challenges. Of course, you need to learn from the lessons. If I, would I do anything differently? Probably not, uh, because whether we, we made decisions that were perfect or not, it's led us to where we're at today. And the other thing is we need to make decisions and deal with the outcome. You, you need to be moving very quickly. Um, and I, I wish I had a more like deep answer for you, but I mean, we're at a very exciting time for a theater that it's hard for me to think about past challenges. That, that, that's absolutely fine. Um, so, so Lena, look, thanks very much for, for, for taking the time to, to talk to us today. Um, and I'm sure that you know, 
you know, what you've shared is going to be sort of fascinating to uh, a lot of our listeners and, and, and also leaders if, who are, are, are in your position. So if after listening to this broadcast, you'd like to tune into future conversations in healthcare, follow our LinkedIn page where we'll be posting alerts to other episode releases. So in closing, I'd like to thank Lean again for, for joining us and, and also thank all our listeners for tuning in. So until next time, stay safe and healthy. Uh, I'm Mike Ward and I'll see you in the next episode.